3.6 billion passengers use commercial flights every year. But getting from A to B can be quite a challenge. In this series, we'll witness the bizarre. I was thinking, what is going on? The bust-ups. As soon as he got within arm's reach of him, all hell broke loose. And on board terror. I just wanted to get out. All captured on camera <laughs> by travellers around the world. From check-in to the cabin. We'll watch the drama unfold. We didn't know if we were going to live or die. As passengers go crazy on a plane. Pretty crazy. This time, one passenger loses his cool on a flight to the Caribbean. We're stuck with this dangerous passenger. Team GB are faced with mayhem at Heathrow. When we landed, there was 350 athletes, and it was like, whoa. A plane load of angry passengers <laughs> threaten to revolt in Rio. <laughs> and a man goes wing-walking in Spain. <laughs> This is the moment, mid-flight, that a man threatens other passengers, <laughs> cabin crew, and even people travelling with him. I was very scared that somebody would get hurt and he would start fighting with everyone around him. High over the Atlantic Ocean, Virgin Flight VS-65 is on its way to Jamaica. On board, student Ola Lily is on her first transatlantic flight heading to the Caribbean. I've heard so many good things about the Caribbeans and about Jamaica. I've seen so many beautiful pictures and I was very excited for this holiday. She's travelling with her friend and the two girls are documenting their trip to the island known as the Land of Wood and Water. We're very happy and very excited. We couldn't wait to go on holiday together. I've never really expected for anything bad to happen. Of course, sometimes you hear different stories in the news, but you think there are millions of flights happening, like, every single day. Nothing bad would happen to your flight. Not long into the nine-hour flight, one passenger sat a few seats from Ola grabs her attention. I've noticed this passenger being aggressive and shouting at one of the flight attendants. Ola thinks she knows what's caused the disruption. Asking different flight attendants to give him more free alcohol, they refused. That's why he got so angry. I felt really bad for the flight attendant because I could see she was struggling to handle the situation. Some people were trying to ignore the situation. They were trying to watch TV, watch like a movie or something, but it was so hard to ignore because the situation was getting way out of hand. Cabin crew can't calm the disgruntled man and soon he's out of his seat. All the passengers that were traveling with him and around him got from trying to calm him down to then being quite defensive, shouting at him. Sit down, you can't be standing up. But the man wasn't listening. I was very scared that somebody would get hurt and he would start fighting with everyone around him. At 30,000 feet, the plane is in chaos and the man is only getting started. The situation was getting a lot worse, much worse. The man gets in the face of a crew member. He was swearing at him, he was threatening him. As the man approaches, the flight attendant has to step back. 
I could see that nobody really knew how to handle the situation. There was no one to stop him. The flight attendants, they can't really do much. They're not like security people. Did he try to stay calm? He tried to not look scared, but we were really scared for him. The Jamaican bound plane is mid-flight over the Atlantic Ocean. The man's behavior is uncontrollable, but the pilot has a plan that will change the course of everything. It used to be that what happened on a flight stayed on a flight, but mobile phones put pay to that. So we've asked travel vloggers, pilots, former cabin crew, and security experts to take a closer look at flights, fights and airport antics caught on camera. Disruptive passengers are a growing problem and a security nightmare for the travel industry. Changai Airport in Singapore. This guy has been pulled over by security officials at the airport. He seems to be a little bit belligerent. He's just dancing in front of them. This guy is doing an excellent job at trying to get himself arrested. Really impressive. These guys just seem really confused. They don't quite know what to do with him. Suddenly you get the finger pointing. And that's when we start to think that this might become physical. And indeed, it does become physical. Don't touch me, man. Don't touch me, He's using language that one wouldn't expect to have used in a public area. And certainly not directed at the police. He's drunk. I'm not allowed to touch you, you're not allowed to touch me. I can't believe some people, to be honest. When I see security staff in an airport, I sort of do the awkward looking down, not knowing where to look, like, please don't arrest me. So he goes around the corner. The security guards are finding it really difficult to know what to do. And one of the guys actually gets his baton out. Possibly more physical than the law enforcement officers actually predict. They just can't control him. They are too small to restrain him or do anything. Bystanders felt the need to get involved because it was too against this guy who was just kind of like, oh, come and get me. He does become increasingly violent and resists arrest. The shocking thing for me is seeing someone in a position of authority seem so weak. In the end, he still seems to be dominating the situation. He was having a laugh the whole way through. He was dancing. He was annoyed and dancing at the same time. Eventually, support did arrive, and they effected the restraint. Intoxicated behavior is a daily occurrence for law enforcement working at airports. And indeed, where do you find a bar that's open at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning at an airport? The man was arrested, charged, and pleaded guilty to assaulting a policeman and using criminal force on the officer's colleague. He was finally sentenced to over eight months in prison. Frankfurt Airport in Germany. There are flight delays caused by bad weather and the check-in area is rammed. I mean, I really dislike queuing at check-in. The queues, the lines, the noise, the security checks, the immigration checks, the customs checks, the documentation checks. And it can just be a really stressful experience. Sometimes it can just all become too much and even the most placid individual can lose it. Loads of people are checking in at the Lufthansa check-in, and everybody appears to be looking at something. Passengers are pulling out their mobile phones and starting to record something, and indeed they certainly have got something to record. There's a guy at the check-in desk. He's got into an argument with the police. We seem to have one rather violent individual who's taking on two members of the German police. 
He's aiming his kicks, he's throwing his punches, and he is pretty sure that he's in the right. He's almost doing like karate kicks, and it gets really violent. It seems like they are overpowered by him. But then support arrives, not from law enforcement, but it appears that a woman joins the scene. He just seems to sort of collapse to the ground, and it's almost as if he's playing dead. Actually, at that point, I'm starting to get a little bit worried about that individual. The British man was arrested for causing bodily harm and resisting arrest. It's incredible to watch people like this because they just seem to handle stress so badly, and it seems to be quite specific to airports. Next, things are getting heated on a plane sat at Baltimore, USA. The beginning of the video just shows that something is going on towards the back of the aircraft, and then you realize that it is law enforcement trying to forcibly remove a female passenger. And she is resisting it quite heavily all the way. I'm sorry, my dad has a surgery. What are you doing? Come on, lady, let's go. This passenger did not want to be on the same aircraft as a passenger who had an animal, a dog. And she could not show a certificate of her allergies. I would have absolutely had her removed from the aircraft. They could not take the risk of having her have an allergic reaction in flight because the aircraft would then have to divert. But also, she was clearly not listening to the cabin crew, which is why there was security on board. The very last resort that the crew would ever take is to involve law enforcement. We also have other passengers giving her advice to stop fighting it. Go carefully, just go softly. Just please show them that you have. Her fighting is actually aggravating the situation. I'm a professor, what are you doing? What are you doing? Jeez, lady, get off the plane. You have to realize when to stop fighting. Once the police is involved, you just take your stuff and you leave the aircraft. That is it. The passenger was charged with disorderly conduct. In court, she didn't contest the charge and was handed probation for six months. The young lady wanted to remain on the plane, but some passengers just can't wait to get off. This is when a man exits a flight from Heathrow to Malaga via the wing. New Year's Eve, 2017. Lots of tourists visited London, including Mavi Macias and her boyfriend, Fernando del Valle Villalobos from Spain. After a week's holiday, the couple headed back to Malaga. Llegamos al aeropuerto de, de Londres, de Staten. Y nos dimos cuenta de que ya el avión llevaba una hora de retraso. El vuelo fue muy normal, estuvimos, nos comimos nuestra chocolatina, nos echamos nuestra siesta. Y llegamos a Málaga a eso de las once y media de la noche. El comandante de vuelo, el piloto, eh, nos dio la bienvenida al aeropuerto Málaga Costa del Sol. Claro, cuando nos dan la bienvenida, pues lo que hace uno lo primero es salirse al pasillo, coger la maleta del compartimento superior que tenemos en los asientos para poder salir lo antes posible. The plane is on the ground, but none of the passengers are being allowed off. Y estuvimos media hora pues de pie ya con el equipaje de mano para salir. Pues el espacio es, es reducido, entonces estamos ya todo un poco nervioso. For one person, a 30 minute wait is just too much. Vimos que este hombre pidió paso entre la gente. Se viene, pide permiso a los pasajeros que estaban sentados en la salida de emergencia. Se va para la puerta y decide salir por el lado del avión. Y en ese momento digo, esto lo tengo que, que grabar e inmortalizarlo. ¡Qué puto crack! ¡Que se va! ¡Que se va! Yo realmente pensaba que se iba, se iba a tirar, porque iba tan decidido que yo creía que iba a saltar. Cuando yo vi que, que el señor salía por el lado del avión, digo, bueno, esto es surrealista, esto parecía una película, 
una película de Indiana Jones cuando sale con el avión parecía... Que se va, que se va. Yo decía, que se va, que se va. Qué puto crack, porque es que era surrealista. Este tipo pasó como otra persona normal. El señor estuvo tranquilo sentado en el, en el borde del de ala del avión como unos dos, tres minutos. Lo que más me sorprendió de todo es que la zafata de vuelo, en este tiempo que el hombre estuvo fuera, allí no apareció nadie. Fue un, un pasajero el que le dijo, el que le dijo a, a este señor que regresara dentro del avión, porque se podía hacer daño. Cuando vuelve al avión, daba una sensación de total tranquilidad. Hubo gente que incluso le molestó y eh, yo escuché comentarios, vaya gracioso lo que ha hecho. The man also claimed that he'd been suffering from claustrophobia and needed some fresh air. Sale de la cabina el piloto del avión preguntando que quién había eh, abierto la, la salida de emergencia. Pero estaba totalmente descompuesto. Está amarillo. <laughs> the 57-year-old Polish national was fined for his dangerous walkabout. On every plane, there's always one person you can turn to. When they first appeared, they were recruited from the nursing profession, and the concept behind their role remains safety. The selection process remains intense and rigorous. They are still the angels of the skies, on hand to serve, help and guide. But the cabin crew role, the passengers and the problems have all changed and the job is not what it was. So we've opened our confessional cabin and invited crew in to open up about the reality of flying. Oh, and some of their identities have been hidden to protect the innocent. One area that all crew have experienced is the rude passenger, but the way to deal with it isn't always with a smile. In terms of getting our revenge on passengers, I have heard some stories of what crew have done. I didn't witness this myself. I know that this did happen from a reliable source. These customers were just the really rude, kicking off, demanding. We were on a Barbados flight, and it was one of the gin and tonic brigade. He had his Pringle jumper on, pink Pringle jumper. He was clicking his fingers for drinks. Oi, happy, get us more drinks. We just thought, this is one of those situations. They wanted a gin and tonic, so she said, OK, that's fine. So she toddled off to the galley. And he closed the curtains and I said, I think he might be missing something out of that drink. And I just got the eye drops out. And she said, oh, my God. And she just put two little drops into each gin and tonic. Just with a smile, she gave him his drink and came back to the galley. And we were all peering out the curtains, watching. I can just imagine her looking through the curtain, like, yeah, you enjoy that. Eye drops, I think, has got to be renowned by cabin crew around the world as a revenge tactic. Eye drops in your drink gives you a little bit of the runs. As it works as a laxative. After she did it, it became a thing. High over the Atlantic Ocean, a passenger on a virgin flight to Jamaica has been arguing with fellow passengers. And threatening cabin crew. <laughs> Student Ola Lilly is on the flight and filming the commotion. He tried to stay calm, he tried to not to look scared, but we were really scared for him. He's gonna get burned. I was really worried that he was going to do something to him, that he would actually physically hurt him. Everyone around me was really scared for that guy. One passenger finally has enough and starts to berate the aggressive man from the other aisle. The woman was saying, behave normally, stop causing any disruptions, just stay seated. He's mad, uncontrollable, and Sue throwing a blanket around the cabin. It all felt like a weird school fight, but because it was happening on board, it felt 
really surreal but very scary at the same time. We are up in the air and there's no way of us escaping the situation. It's not like we can get off the plane at any point. So we're stuck with this dangerous passenger. What Ola and her fellow passengers don't know is that the captain is aware of the problem and about to take decisive action. There was this map and it always kept saying from London Gatwick to Montego Bay. But then at one point we looked at the map and it said Hamilton in Bermuda. The plane is no longer heading to Jamaica. Its course has been diverted towards the island of Bermuda, situated 1,200 miles to the north of Jamaica. A good three hours flying time. We asked one of the flight attendants about why it says Hamilton on the little screen. She said she couldn't speak about it. They were worried about the man becoming even more aggressive and angry once he would find out. With most passengers unaware of the change in destination, they soon find themselves on the ground. But the mad passenger still needs to be removed. Ladies and gentlemen, just please remain seated. The toilets will not become in use at this time. Thank you. I don't feel like he realised we're landing because of him, especially because when the officers came to get him off the plane, that's when he got really surprised and he refused to leave. He was like, there's no way I'm leaving. I'm going to Jamaica. The man is angry, and it takes five officers to drag him off the flight. After being trapped with the angry man for several hours, for Ola, the delay in Bermuda was a small price to pay for peace. Our flight was delayed by about four and a half hours, but it was getting so out of hand that the decision about the landing was definitely the right decision. The man, Mark Blake, was found guilty of disorderly behaviour on an aircraft and fined $2,000. I'm not sure how he would feel afterwards. Perhaps if he sobered up, then maybe he would think, oh, what have I done? But I feel like he was one of the types of guys, he wouldn't care about all the other passengers, he would just care about the trouble he caused for himself. Across the world, every day, millions of people jump on a flight. The cost of a plane ticket has more than halved since 1970. Low-cost airlines have made it even cheaper and opened up the skies to everyone. But there was a time when flying was a rare luxury, when getting on a plane was the pursuit of only the wealthy or businessmen, when planes had proper tables and the food was served silver service. And there is one British man who remembers that time well. Fred Finn has flown the most supersonic passenger journeys ever and over 13 million commercial flight miles. One flight in particular on Concord on Christmas Day in the late 70s sticks in my mind in particular. Three passengers only, quite surprising. So we got more than a good champagne than we could drink and the food is of course immaculate. But one of the guys sitting there took out his guitar and played Country Road. And yes, it was superstar John Denver who was on the flight with us. Turns out he was a really nice guy, a pilot in his own right, what a flight. And like every organized OAP, Fred's got a tip on how to travel without any dramas. Here's a tip that I would suggest you follow when you fly. I'm often given bottles of wine, which you can't take on board anymore. So you have to pack them. Well, quite simple. The breaking part of a bottle is in the neck. So I nick the toilet rolls from the hotel. I put the toilet roll over the neck of the bottle, put it in a sock and pack it in the middle. I've had 10 bottles in a case and not one broken yet. Sometimes, no matter how organised you are with your luggage, things will still go wrong. Team GB has flown into Heathrow Airport and into the middle of baggage carnage.
Everyone remembers the 2016 Rio Olympics. Team GB performs brilliantly, finishing with a total of 67 medals. Matt Langridge is one of the rowers heading home successfully with a gold medal. Suddenly, in five and a half minutes, it's all over and it's done, and it's almost disbelief. You then get a sudden influx of joy and satisfaction. Other athletes don't have a medal, but a life experience to cherish, like sisters Ellie and Becky Downey. My first day of competition, I actually landed on my head in my floor routine. Never done it in training before. The majority of our team, it didn't go to plan, and to have Ellie there was incredible. The plane home for Team GB was also a unique affair. The Boeing 747 was just solely for the British team. So we had a team full of people excited and celebrating the fact that we'd just done well. Everyone mingled, we were allowed to move around. A lot of the time people were playing drinking games just because they could. It was definitely a rowdy flight home, let's just say that. <laughs> when we landed, obviously, there was 350 athletes with two bags that were checked in, possibly three. So yeah, there was a lot, a lot of bags. You're really excited to just be back and then everyone's kind of chatting and then the, these bags start coming out and it was like, whoa. Some bright spark decided to coordinate the team's image down to the last detail. But there is one problem. And they're all identical. There was hundreds. <laughs> red bag after red bag after red bag after red bag. An hour later, there's suddenly 700 red bags. It was a bit of chaos, because you've not only got 700 red bags, we're all in the same matching kit. It's just a mass of bodies trying to organise these bags. And then people bringing different bags just kind of off the conveyor belt, just confused it more, because they just ended up everywhere. Everyone was just a bit, like, flustered, trying to find their bag. But a plane load of Olympians isn't going to fall at the last hurdle home. Some of us straight away jumped to attention and used the discipline that they've developed through their sport to try and organise everybody. It took around an hour to an hour and a half to get your bags and then get out. When I left the bag of chore, there was definitely a lot of athletes and a lot of red bags that hadn't been found, so I suspect that there were some athletes there for a lot longer than I was. And in our world of instant reaction, Twitter goes into meltdown. It was quite amusing for us, and I guess I didn't realise how amusing everyone else found it until I posted my picture on Twitter, and then suddenly I had many people commenting and many people liking it. You'd by accident got Jason Kenny's bag and ended up with three gold medals as opposed to one. It could have, it could have been a bit of a bonus, but uh, I'm sure you'd be made to give them back eventually. After several hours, the British Olympians finally leave departures with the correct red bag. Waiting around an airport can be tedious and boring, but not everyone gets frustrated. Some people, like Kim Lagrateria, see it as a chance to work out. I have a half an hour until my flight starts boarding, an hour until we actually take off. That gives me plenty of time to get something in and go in here. She starts off tame enough. But soon, she's jumping on chairs and squats with her hand luggage. Kim's not the only one who likes to get active. I'm gonna keep going here until it's time to board. But at least it's legal. In Thailand, this lady is using the cables on the outside of the airport to practice her gymnastics. She balances. She hangs and after two hours, she eventually falls onto a giant inflatable rescue pad. It's not only passengers who can suffer from boredom. It can affect the staff as well. Job done loading the plane. Time to perfect her star jumps. This is the scene when a plane load of delayed and angry passengers finally revolt on board their plane. We lost everything no because of you. 
Brazil. The Confederations Cup has just finished and everyone is heading home, including professional sports photographer Simon Stackpool. I'd never been to Rio before, so the idea of being sent out there to cover the Confederations Cup was a dream come true, you know, go to photograph football in the home of South American football. It was just as we'd hoped it would be, vibrance and excitement. And I got to go and see some of the places I'd always wanted to see. Copacabana Beach, Christ the Redeemer, and I got to go there as part of my job. Great experience. However, by the time we arrived back at the airport, we were definitely ready to head back to London. We checked in, the flight was on time, so as far as we were concerned, in three hours' time, we'd be taking off and heading home. We were hoping for a smooth flight. That would have been nice. Coming up to midnight, and the only thing people wanted to do was get on the plane, have the plane take off, and go to sleep. And sleep is what Simon did. Until he's woken up by a commotion. Shouting and swearing and interrupting what was a pretty good night's sleep up to that point. Could have been asleep in five minutes as far as I was concerned, but it wasn't. I looked at my watch and it turned out it had been three and a half hours, and that was when I understood some of the passengers' concerns. For over three hours, the fully laden plane has remained rooted to the tarmac at Rio Airport. I woke up not having a clue what was going on, so to suddenly hear all these swear words and this abuse that was being shouted at people in the cabin was a massive surprise. The plane is meant to be mid-Atlantic, but there's a technical fault that ground engineers are trying to fix. The language was pretty colourful. But there was one particular chap shouting a lot of different swear words directly at the cabin crew. He's concerned that he was potentially going to travel on a plane that wasn't safe to fly. He'd been shouting louder and louder, his language had been getting worse and worse, and he was working the rest of the cabin up. The angry ringleader is ready to leave and is remonstrating with cabin crew. Yeah, I'm not going. I'm definitely not going. With other passengers following his lead, people are no longer seated. The technical fault is about to become all-out revolt. The passengers on the Rio flight are happy to vent their frustrations on the flight attendants, who deal with it professionally. But what really winds crew up? We're back in the confessional cabin. Don't touch us in terms of prodding us, poking us, pulling on our uniform. That is a real big no-no. Passengers pressing their call bell every five minutes, that will wind someone up. Don't ignore us. Definitely never ask cabin crew for sex. Just the things in the magazine were for sale. When you're just coming into land, they've had hours and hours and hours to go to the loo, but they don't need the loo until that seatbelt sign illuminates. Please and thank you go a hell of a long way with us. Clicking your fingers at anyone in any language is rude. Be nice to crew, because if you don't, they're going to get you back. Just remember that our glamorous, overworked and underpaid cabin crew are there to save your backside and not to kiss it. We've now all been told. We're back with our travel specialists, casting their expert eyes over the weird and wonderful world of flying, caught on camera. Some passengers want to enjoy their flight, while others want to party through it. This cabin crew flying from Manila to Taipei are actively encouraging their passengers to go a little wild for New Year's Eve. It's midnight on New Year's Eve and cabin crew are trying to get everyone excited. They're wearing feather headdresses and they've got horns. And they're doing their absolute best to try to get the festive uh, feeling and spirit of the passengers and maybe not succeeding to a great extent. They're handing out gifts to passengers. But a lot of them just look a bit bemused and just 
bewildered at what's going on and not very excited at all. The crew are really trying their best to rally the troops. Unfortunately, the flight is not that busy, but they do a countdown from 10. They're doing the countdown and a few people sort of wave their arms in the air, but everyone else is just looking on like... It's a bit of a pathetic attempt, but better than nothing. <laughs> Meanwhile in Belgium, a brighter bee is getting in on the safety demonstration. She's got the belt and she's doing a very funny piss take of the safety instructions. <laughs> her friends were loving it. They were laughing through all they were egging her on. <laughs> the safety briefing is something that we are encouraged to listen to. But when it's just a member of cabin crew doing the arms and everything, you sort of switch off. Many airlines are using very creative means, cartoon versions, comedy. <laughs> but most airlines are still carrying out the standard safety briefing. <laughs> In an age where you can't get people to look out from their phones if it would save their lives, then I think that this safety briefing probably had much more attention than most safety briefing does. Gibraltar. Three friends are experiencing something most passengers will never witness. This group of girls have clearly been on a holiday, lots of boozing. Having a party, they're out, and then they're getting ready to go home. They have shown up to the airport, and the lounge is completely empty. That continues as they enter the aircraft later on. They're still the only ones in the aircraft. We're currently on a flight, and it's really busy. And of course now they've got free reign of the plane to do whatever they want. They're really having a good time with this probably once in a lifetime opportunity. Oh, I love it. I've got my champagne in my glass. You'd just be so excited, especially to know that it's just you and your friends. This is the best flight in the world. I have flown planes which have very few passengers, but going with only three passengers, no. It's absolutely fantastic. Private jet all the way down. It's crazy, because I always wonder why the plane is empty. What has happened here is there was some kind of a delay to their original flight and they had started to reallocate passengers on other flights. Now these girls were coming in the last minute and those were the only ones who couldn't be reallocated to other flights. Hence they got the aircraft for themselves because the aircraft still had to go and they really, really made the best out of it. To actually gain access to the cockpit after the flight, if the airline allows it and if the captain allows, then this is still possible to do. Both the flight crew and the cabin crew thought that this was hilarious. Everyone enjoyed themselves in this flight. Back in Brazil, the passengers aren't having such a fun time. A fully laden BA flight is grounded at Rio Airport while engineers try to fix a technical fault. But after three hours, some passengers are demanding to be let off immediately. It seems the passengers are concerned that the plane isn't fit to fly and they want off. With a very vocal ringleader, other passengers soon start joining in. It was all him that had started the, the shouting and the, the abuse and she decided to get up and join in and sort of say, yeah, we're all in this together, you know, let's get this flight cancelled, I'm getting off this plane. I felt a lot of sympathy for the cabin crew because they've got a guy shouting abuse in their face, he's gathering more fans and they were just trying to keep their cool, trying to be as professional as they could. We are more than four hours here. Faced with angry passengers, the cabin crew can't do much other than persuade them to sit down. But the ringleader hasn't finished. 
he insults the airline. He threatens to ruin people's careers. And then rounds it off with the do you know who I am trick. With typical British reserve, the pilot makes an announcement. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. The captain wants you all, and uh, some of you are uh, very frustrated. We're all frustrated. We are going to go in two minutes' time. When the pilot announced that we'd suddenly, miraculously be flying in two minutes' time, the pessimists amongst us believed that he was saying that in order to calm the passengers down. So please, please sit down, otherwise we'll be unable to leave the stand. As the pilot's request to the passengers rings out, an Eagle Eye crew member spots Simon filming and orders him to stop. But the situation is far from over. One of the more burly looking cabin crew tried to restrain him. They then announced that in fact the plane wouldn't be leaving in two minutes and it wouldn't be leaving at all and that the flight was going to be cancelled. And they blamed the cancellation of the flight on the rowdy passengers. It wasn't a happy cabin. To this day, Simon isn't happy with how he witnessed the situation develop. Our flight got cancelled. We got delayed more than half a day. And it might not have been like that had he behaved himself a little bit better. After being put up overnight in a hotel, the passengers returned the following day for their flight. But the ringleader from the night before has a nasty surprise following his outspoken behaviour. They'd been taken out of the check-in queue and asked not to get on that flight. I'd remember the guy charging down the plane, shouting and swearing. It was something totally different, something that you don't see, something I'm not sure I will see again. Not all trouble is caused by unruly passengers. Sometimes the weather gets in on the act, like at Nangchang, Changbi International Airport in China. Strong winds are battering planes at the gates, even damaging one. But it's in departures that things get really violent. As passengers watch on, the roof starts to creak. And then a huge section gives way and comes crashing down. Twisted metal is left lying on the exit pavement, right outside the terminal. Luckily, no one was hurt, and quite amazingly, airport operations were back to normal by the evening. Sometimes it pays not to be out in the open when bad weather hits. Yeyang Choshan Airport, China. There's a thunderstorm. The plane parked at the gate takes a direct strike. Fortunately, no one was on the aircraft at the time and no one was hurt on the ground. In Dublin, they have their own weather problems. Snow has engulfed the airport. Flights have been cancelled. But airport ground crew are still working. Well, some of them. One member of the ground crew has found a way to enjoy the snow. Performing donuts in a baggage tug only yards from a plane. He keeps his cool and luckily for everyone, pulls the trick off without any incident. We've seen rows, risky wing walking, and red bags. With air travel on the rise, more passengers mean more problems. And more problems can lead to more people going crazy on a plane. Oh, no!